Welcome back to Advanced Python. Today we're going to be building an automated web scraping system. In our last session, we did a lecture on web scraping and we did a couple of examples. A GitHub example where we're looking at GitHub's trending page and extracting the trending repositories for that day. And then we also did an example where we were pretending that we were a market analyst or a business analyst and collecting pricing information from our competitors. Today we are going to continue on this path, except in this case we're going to be building a scrape system to scrape job listings off of a website and we're going to set that system up so that it updates the job listings uh, table daily and this project is based off of a project by real python so let's go over there so real python has a whole project or system on uh, beautiful soup and how to work with beautiful soup but what we are primarily working with today is the fake python job site so on this real python page there's this whole website that has fake python jobs or fake jobs generally and what we're going to do today is parse this information off of this website so that we can create a graphical user interface or a table of all the listings here with the job title, the company name, and the location of the job. So as always, our first step is to get our setup taken care of and make our import. So we're going to start by installing or making sure we have beautiful soup for installed and request installed. If you are working off a local machine and you'd like to build a graphical user interface rather than just a table, you can then also install Tekinter. Uh, if you're working from a virtual environment or a remote environment, you cannot use Tekinter from the browser. So you'll have to just make a table in the browser and then build your system around that. Next, we're going to make our import. So we're first going to import our request library. That's to make our connection with our website. Then we're going to import the beautiful soup function to actually make our soup from our HTML. Then if you're working with Tekinter, you'll need these two imports. Import Tekinter as TK and from Tekinter and from Tekinter import TTK. And TTK is a function basically to build a widget. After that, we'll need to import pandas as PD, and then we're also going to import a table library to make pretty tables out of our data. So before we automate this system, let's just get the web scraping taken care of. So like I said, we're going to be scraping this website today, and this website has a pretty clear structure. It looks like we've got a title and some information up top, and then each of the job postings appears to be shown on a card. So each of these is an individual element. So what we're going to do is figure out which tags and elements elements we are interested in. So to do that, we're going to highlight the name of the job, we're going to right click, and then we're going to inspect our elements. When we inspect our element, we can get an idea of the general structure of this page. And what we see is that it looks like each of them is, each of these job postings is saved as a card, um, but we do not need the entire card information. We're specifically interested in the job title, the company name, and then the job location. So we can go a little further in and it looks like there's another div that's called card content here. So that's the first element we're going to grab is div class equals card content. And that should provide us all of the information for every single one of these cards. And then underneath card content, we're going to look for the title of our job. And it looks like our title of the job is actually saved under H2 heading 2, and the class is set to title. And then also for H3, you'll see we uh, H3 or heading 3 has class subtitle, and that subtitle is the company name. So we'll grab H2 and H3 out of there. And then to figure out where the job is located, it looks like job location is set in a different div. Um, it's still on the card, but in a di in the card content, but in a different section here. So we'll highlight the job location, right click and inspect it. And you'll see that it's right under div class content. And you see we have a paragraph that says class equals location. So we'll either access this div or access the class location. And I think the class location makes more sense. So that's the information that we need off of this website. Looks like we're aiming to get the div class card content. We're going to grab the title, the subtitle, and then the location here. So our structure here is pretty well laid out. It's pretty self-explanatory and easy to navigate. So now let's go back over to our collab environment and set up our initial web scraper. So first thing we're going to do is send our get request. So we're going to set up our URL here. Our URL is realpython.github.io slash forward slash fake jobs. And then we're going to set up our header, which is basically just defining where you're accessing this information from. So ours is set to user agent and then Mozilla. Now, after you've got your URL and your header defined, we can send out a 
uh, request to get that URL with that header, and we will save that as a new object called response. After we've set up our response, we are going to start parsing our HTML. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that we have successfully connected to that website. So we're gonna look for a response to have a status code of 200, which means you're good. If not, we're gonna say that we want a we want to get an error message that basically gives us the status code of the error. Um, assuming we get a successful connection, the next thing we're going to do is define our soup. So we're going to create a new object called soup, which is equal to the beautiful soup function. And we're going to ask beautiful soup to consist of our response and the content of our response. And then we're going to use the HTML parser to parse that content. Once we have our soup defined, we're going to find the elements that we wanted from that soup. So we're going to create a new object that's called job tags and job tags will be equal to our soup. And in our soup, we want to find every possible situation or instance where there is a div where the class is equal to card content that we just saw on our fake Python or fake jobs listing. Now, once we have our job tags defined, we're going to loop through uh, using a for loop, loop through our job tags, and we're going to say for job in job tags. I want you to find me the title element, the company element, and the location element. And each of those will be equal to their, their individual uh, parameters that we saw on the fake Python website. So this basically, each of these will be equal to the job dot find, and then we're going to tell it what it's, what heading it's looking for, what HTML elements looking for, and then we're going to define the class. So the class will be title company or location. After that, we're just going to ask it to print out our data and let's go ahead and run that. And there we go. So this is, these are all the listings off of that website. And you'll notice that each of them basically has the name or the job title, the name of the company, and then the location for the job. And so we've got, I think, 99 listings or 100 listings um, off of that website. Now that we know that our web scraper works and we've successfully made our connections, we can build on that web scraper and add some more formatting to it, some more structure to it. So the first five lines of code here are going to be the exact same. We're going to send our get requests um, based off of our URL and our headers. Then we're going to start parsing our HTML. And then once we get down to finding the elements that we want, this is where our structure changes just a little bit. So our soup find all function where we're looking for our job tags stays exactly the same. Once we get into the jobs themselves, though, we're going to change up our structure just a little bit so that we can change the format of our data. Because you saw here that the output, the output of the last scrape that we ran basically returns the data in a line by line format where we don't have any kind of tag or we don't have any kind of key to tell us what this word means or what this word means. So we're missing context in this structure. So in this next round, what we're going to do is try to add that structure back in. And so to do that, we're going to create a new object that's called jobs and jobs is just an empty list. And then we're going to say for each job, I want you to find these headings with this class and save that as the title element. And then we're going to say, if there is a title element, then I want you to take that title element and strip the text away from it and save that as a new object called title. And then assuming that we got a title, we're going to say, look for a company element. And that company element object will be equal to the job that we're looking at dot find. And then anywhere we can find the heading three with the class equal to company. And then we're going to say, if there is a company element, then I want you to take that company element and strip the text away, save that as the company. And then we do the same thing for location. In this case, we're asking to find in the job element, uh, a place where we have P, a P element, which is a paragraph element, and the class is equal to location. And if there is a location element, then we say, strip that text away, save it as location. Now, once we have the title, the company, and the location stripped off of their HTML elements and save just as text, then we are going to take this jobs list that we started earlier and we are going to append the jobs list and we're going to say that the job title is equal to the title of the job that we saved up above. The company is equal to the company and then the location is equal to the location. So this basically just provides us with more structure by creating key value pairs and adding context to our data. So we're saving it in a different format to work with it further downstream. Let's go ahead and run that. And you'll see that it prints out in a totally different format. So up above, we have basically just stacked lines of information and it's going sequentially in the 
uh, job, company, location, format, but we do not have any labels for that. In this case, we've saved this list in a totally new format where it tells us that the key for this first item is job title, and then the value of job title is a senior Python developer. And then we have the key of company and the company being equal to Payne, Roberts, and Davis. And then we have location and location is equal to Stuart Burry AA. So that continues for all of our possible job listings. Now, this is beneficial to us because this is structured data that later on we can split up and turn into a table or pass to a table in our graphical user interface in our GUI with Tekinter. So now we know that our web scraping process is actually working. We've successfully made connections. We've extracted the data we're interested in. We've saved it in a format that we think we can work with. Now let's build a wrapper around this entire system. So the next step in our process here will be to define functions that will allow us to automate this process, build a little bit of infrastructure around this so that if we wanted to, this process could repeat without us and basically stand alone as its own app. And so the first step here is going to be to define get URL. Uh, define get URL basically covers the three, the first three steps of our process here. So defining the header, defining the response and making the connection to the website, and then making our soup and returning the soup. Once we have the URL defined, we can pass that URL to another function, which we can call loop the soup. So loop the soup will only require one parameter, which is the website name. We can take that website name and pass it through the exact same function that we were working with up above. So we can pass it through this code right here, basically from beyond parse HTML. And it'll, it should give us, in theory, the exact same response that we just got. And after we've looped through the soup and we've made our new listing of jobs, what we can do is pass this jobs object either to a jobs GUI where we're going to build an output or to a table to display the jobs. So if you're working on a local machine, like I said, you can build a graphical user's inter user interface using the Tekinter library. And this is as simple as saying, hey, I want a new window. That new window will be equal to tk.tk. .tk. So basically open a Tekinter widget window and set that window title equal to the job listings. After you've done that, in this new window, what we want to do is create a new table, and that table will be a tree view of the window. And then we're going to specify that the table has columns, which are job title, company, and location. Those three values or that those three pieces of data that we collected from our fake jobs website. And then we're going to specify that each of the each of those three values, job title, company, and location, will be a heading, which will be equal to some kind of text. And then we're going to say for the website that we listed up above and every job in the jobs list, which has items, I want you to go and insert each of those items into our table uh, based off of the value that was given in there. And I notice here that it says website, comma, price. Price is incorrect. That would be a uh, job. And then after we're done adding each of those jobs to the table, we're going to say table.pack. So pack it all up, make it one consistent interface and pack it into the parent interface. And then we're going to say window main loop to basically run and create this window. And if you do that on your local machine, you should end up with a pop up on your screen that shows you all of your job listings. Now, because we're working in the Google Colab environment, we cannot use the Kent will not let us pop up a display on our local machine from this remote environment. So what we're going to do instead is just turn this information into a table. So we're going to define another function that's called display jobs and to display our jobs. All we need is the jobs object that we created up above when we looped our soup. What we're going to do inside of the display job function is basically use pandas to create a data frame from that jobs object. So that'll split up everything by the key value pairs inside of the jobs list and turn that into a data frame. And then with that DF, we're going to just ask to print the data frame using the tabulate function. And we're going to say that the headers are equal to the keys in the data frame and that the table format is PSQL, which is just a preset of uh, table formatting. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, we've got those functions made. We didn't get any errors. So now let's go ahead and test our system. So the first thing we're going to do is define our website because the website is the one input that loop the soup needs. And then after we've defined our website of interest, we're going to say, hey, create a new object that's called jobs. So spit out that as a return and jobs will be equal to loop the soup of our website. And then after we've looped our soup, I want you to display the jobs of the jobs object. 
and that's all it takes. We just need these three lines right here. Let's go ahead and run it. And there you go. In just a couple of seconds, we end up with this very nice, very clean table format of all of the job listings that we were looking at, uh, at previously. So rather than having all of this information stacked on top of each other as the job title, the company name, and then the location in a single row, now we have an index table with each of the job titles in its own column, each of the companies in its own column, and every location in its own column. So this is much easier for us to look at, and this would be uh, a lot more user friendly. Now that is our basic system here. So we've got a system that's functioning, it's successfully scraping our information and sending it to our machine from the website. So we've built a system around this web scraper, but what if we wanted to automate that system? So to automate that system, we can use a Python package called schedule. So we can do pip install schedule, and then we can ask the computer to import schedule and import time. So time is obviously just the time that it currently is. And the scheduling module is a module that allows you to schedule tasks in advance. So it's built for scripting. And so what we're gonna do to automate this process is create another function that's called run scraping program. And run scraping program will be equal to the exact system that we just built right here. So all we need to define to automate this system is the website that we're interested in. Then we're gonna tell it to loop the soup and create a new object called jobs. And then we're gonna ask it to display those jobs. And that'll be equal to our run scraping program. And then after we've defined how to run the scraping program, we can schedule the program to run. So we can say schedule.every and then you give it the amount of time that you want to wait. So in our case, 24 hours. And then we specify that that's hours, not days. And then we say, do this thing. So we want you to do run scraping program. So every 24 hours, we want you to run the scraping program. And then we say, continuously run the scheduled jobs. So basically, this is a way where you could leave this window open or leave this terminal open and continuously run the run scraping job or the run scraping program to collect your job listings every 24 hours. And now in just a couple minutes, we have an automated web scraping program that we can use to do basically anything we want to collect data on anything we're interested in as long as we are being ethical about our practices. So for instance, in this case, we're collecting job listings. We could also use this to collect pricing information uh, to know when our competitors increase or decrease their pricing. Uh, we could do this to collect new research papers off of the internet and save them to a database for us to read at a later time and save PDFs. Um, you could use this to collect the news off of, the, off of a website. So the benefit to web scraping doesn't come just from collecting the data, it actually comes from building a system around that data to analyze the data uh, and use it for some kind of other tool or practice. So that's the end of our session on web scraping. I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope you have a wonderful day and an even better rest of your week, and I'll see you next time.